cells, but we do have Y chromosome DNA for, for humans. By the way, there's a reason why we don't get it from the Neanderthals. Uh, with the Y chromosome DNA, that's nuclear DNA, and you only get two copies per cell. Uh, with a mitochondrial DNA, you get 500 to 1,000 copies per cell. So it's a lot easier to reconstruct ancient mitochondrial DNA than it is to construct uh, ancient Y chromosome DNA. And you say, uh, you know, can we go to the other bipedal primates? Uh, most geneticists believe that there's virtually a zero chance that we'll ever recover intact DNA from any other bipedal primate species, simply because uh, they're too ancient. Uh, we may be able to get it from Homo sapiens idelto, and maybe the archaic Homo sapiens we see in Israel. Those are only about 100,000 years old. But as far as Homo erectus goes, that's 1.8 million to about 500,000 years ago. That's too much time. And that amount of time, the DNA will degrade to a point where you simply can't reconstruct it. Uh, but mitochondrial DNA, you can dig significantly deeper into the past than you can with Y chromosome. So that's the reason why we only have Y chromosome uh, for humans. Uh, but when you look at our Y chromosome DNA, just like with the mitochondrial DNA, it demonstrates that there is no uh, evolution going on in human Y chromosome. Humans that have been dead 30 to 40,000 years reveal a Y chromosome that's indistinguishable from the Y chromosomes of modern humans. And in the case of Y chromosome diversity, it's even less than what we see for the mitochondrial DNA. So that establishes by two independent lines that the human species has not evolved. Now I mentioned here the great apes because they've been able to recover Y chromosomes from living gorillas, two different species, both the mountain gorillas and the valley gorillas, and uh, orangutans and chimpanzees. And uh, what they notice in uh, those four species is that just like with humans, you see very little diversity. And yet we compare the Y chromosome of, say, mountain gorillas with orangutans or with chimpanzees or with humans, you see a huge difference. Now, the old story was that these great apes and humans had a common ancestor uh, anywhere from 5 to 20 million years ago. Uh, but that no longer washes because we can see that there's very little diversity in each of these uh, species, and yet there's a huge difference when you go from species to species, which means that 20 million years would not be adequate time uh, to explain the differences in the uh, Y chromosomes in between, uh, between the species, among the species, given that there's so little diversity in each species. That low amount of diversity tells us that the rate of evolution is slow. By the way, uh, this is something that fits perfectly uh, our reasons to believe speciation model. Uh, we have this published in this book, uh, The Genesis Question, uh, where we talk about how about a dozen years ago now, we assembled a team of uh, leading evolutionary biologists who are all Christians uh, from Caltech, uh, UCLA, UC Irvine, uh, University of Southern California, UC Riverside, UC San Diego, literally California's best universities. And uh, we had them come to our office every couple of months over the span of about uh, two and a half years. And our goal was to build a mathematical model to predict speciation from a naturalistic perspective. And the driving mechanisms of, of uh, evolutionary change are natural selection and mutations. Well, we quickly figured out that natural selection isn't going to do a lot for you. Mutations are really the only way you're going to generate big changes. Uh, but the problem is that when you look at the genomes of different life forms, you notice that you get at least 10,000 deleterious mutations. These are mutations that are harmful for the survival of the species uh, for every beneficial mutation. And uh, sometimes the ratio gets as bad as 10 million to 1, but the best you see is 10,000 to 1. And then the reason why we had some physicists and mathematicians and went along with the evolutionary biologists is to make the point that uh, no one in biology is built a speciation model taking into account that the solar system significantly changes over time and the planet significantly changes. As I was talking this morning, 
uh, our planet is now rotating six times more slowly than when God first created bacteria on the planet. Uh, the radioactive output from the core of the Earth is only one-fifth of what it was. And uh, we have the sun 15% brighter today. And uh, the problem or the challenge for every life form is to be able to pick up on the benefit of the beneficial mutations before that species is driven to extinction by either the deleterious mutations or by the changes in the physics of the Earth and the Sun. And the bottom line is this. A species is guaranteed to go extinct before it can evolve into a different species unless its population exceeds one quadrillion, unless its body size is less than one centimeter, and unless its generation time is briefer than three months. That's the time between being born and being able to give birth. Well, if you look at the primates, uh, none of them are anywhere close to those limits. None of the primates number more than a few billion in the population, and all of us have huge body sizes, much bigger than one centimeter across, and we all take significantly longer than three months to reproduce. And so this really beautifully explains why we're seeing uh, no genetic evidence for evolution in orangutans, chimpanzees, gorillas, human beings, uh, and uh, Neanderthals. Uh, for what it's worth, uh, we believe that our uh, mathematical model is much too conservative because our model, if our numbers were right, would predict that we would witness the appearance of a brand new bacterial species about once every year. And we've had the capacity to pick up these additional bacterial species at least for the past 150 years. And over that 150 years, we have seen zero bacterial species come into existence. So that tells us that we were too conservative in our numbers, which is not surprising because we didn't have very good data to work with. We were just doing the best we could. Uh, but let me move on. One of the things that the Bible definitively says... All right, here we go. Got to find my cursor. You see it. There it is. Okay. What does the Bible definitively say about human origins? I mean, it says a lot, but uh, much of it is uh, difficult to pin down specifically. But one of the things we can be certain about is it tells us that Adam and Eve were the last of God's creation miracles. When God created Eve, he went into a state of rest and still remains in that state of rest according to Hebrews 4. This is that day of creation when God does not create new species of life. And this is something that's well witnessed by the biological community. We see all kinds of extinctions, but we have yet to witness the appearance of even one animal species in the record of nature. But the fossil record tells us that there was abundant speciation going on and an average of one new species appearing every year uh, before uh, the human race uh, shows up on the scene. The other thing the Bible definitively tells us is that humans were the only spirit species that God created on Earth. One of the points, this book is coming out in September, uh, Who is Adam, our uh, latest book uh, on our 10-book uh, series on our testable creation model. And uh, one of the things we point out is that if you want to destroy the Christian faith, then just prove that the human species has no unique attributes. I would argue that Christianity is fundamentally built uh, on the biblical doctrine that we humans are special in all the species of life that God created. Uh, we have three different kinds of animals, according to Genesis 1 and Psalm 104, that God creates. They're the purely physical creatures, uh, like the bacteria, the viruses, and the insects. And then we have the soulish creatures, like the birds and mammals, and a couple of species of the higher uh, reptiles, and uh, then we have human beings. Uh, the soulish animals, Old Testament definition, are those creatures endowed by God with mind, will, and emotions to form relationships with human beings. Uh, but we alone are body, soul, and spirit, and it's our spirit component that enables us to discover God and form a relationship with God. So I particularly enjoy uh, Job 39 in the sense that it tells us how God designed these creatures to have this powerful desire to relate to us. Well, likewise, we are created to have a powerful desire uh, to relate to God. Sin gets in the way, of course, 
but nevertheless, uh, there is that spirit uh, component to us. So we are the only species, according to the Bible, that wonders about what's coming after we finish this life.